What's up guys, DRock here. Uh, sorry that I've been kind of MIA recently. Of, uh, work's been keeping me really busy. And as much as I like doing these uh, videos, I still need to like feed myself and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, today we're gonna be doing some uh, drum synthesis, specifically kick drums. Uh, I've been, I made four of them so far today. Uh, we'll do a quick listen. So yeah, a few simple, a few simple kick drums. Um, but yeah, let, let's uh, think about um, like uh, to make this how like like how a physical kick drum actually works. So typically, it's going to be a um, it'll be a beater that's going to hit the uh, skin of a bass drum. It's going to start vibrating that skin really freaking fast, and then then really slow with a with a with a with a um, swoop down in a pitch that's stupid fast. So to emulate this, uh, we're just gonna modulate the pitch of an oscillator. So for this, uh, we're gonna use Thor. You can use Subtractor, Maelstrom, kind of whatever you want, as long as you're able to route an, um, an envelope to the pitch of an oscillator to make it go down stupid fast. So I've already got a note that I've been using. I think it's a G1 maybe. Uh, so let's get this thing scooping first and foremost. Uh, we'll use a, the mod envelope to oscillator one pitch, crank it way up. I usually like high nine or low nineties, high eighties for it. Next, uh, we were next. Let's, let's uh, mess with the envelope. We're, we're we are going to want the uh, attack all the way down, sustain all the way down, and then we'll kind of have to play with the release to to find the sweet spot of like how we want this uh like how we want this bass drum to really sound. Or something like that. And we'll switch it to a uh, sign. You can also use triangle as well. Kind of your own personal preference, um, but yeah, that's like the main. That's going to be the main portion of it, and the rest of it is going to be how you um, like, like how you um, uh, like uh, what various effects you apply to this to make it, you know, your own style of um, of um, of um, kick drum. So like, uh, we're gonna start with a scream because I throw scream on pretty much everything. I think it sounds pretty good. So now from here, let we can uh, bounce this in uh, place. If you do not have uh, reason nine, uh, you'll have to um, go set set the uh, set the the uh, synth to uh, record source, and then um, change probably stereo, and then go into whichever one you want. That way, it's actually going to read it. Um, so now we can start adding some more effects to shape this how we want it. Cut out some of those crappy sounds, so some of those, those crappy frequencies that uh, you know you won't want in there. Um, I like chopping out the super low sub bass bass because uh, that's going to be filled in with like with like with like an actual sub bass whether whether it be like um in eight oh eight or you know something's typically going to fill that out that uh that that uh, you'll do separately really, at, at least for like a lot of the um a lot of like um, dubstep trap you know those more heavy EDM genres um, I like adding a boost. Right around 100 hertz, there seems to be a lot of punchiness there. Um, and uh, if you don't have soft tube saturation knob, I would highly recommend grabbing it. I think it's free in the uh, uh, in the uh, rack extension shop. Um, it's kind of awesome. I, I love this one knob. Uh, it's great. Hey, so uh, we're gonna crank it up, and then we're also gonna throw on keep low. Brings out a few extra harmonics and stuff like that, and it just kind of sounds awesome. 
Uh, so, all right, as you can see, uh, this, um, this uh, file rings out a fair amount. And we don't necessarily want that, uh, that uh, ringing out. Uh, so we're gonna use a fade to lessen that. How much you fade is kind of up to uh, you. Um, you know, if you're doing like uh, if you're doing like um, big room house or something like that, you can let that ring out and just keep in mind which you know what like you know what um, initial note you use to to actually create the uh, sound. And because in those genres, you know that you know that's where that's where that super low sub bass kind of kind of comes from. Versus like like uh, like uh, I'm making this for um, more dubstep trap future bassy type of stuff. So the sub bass will be filled in separately. So we want this to be fairly short. Cool. So uh, we got it here. Uh, I'm a big fan of bouncing in. Uh, just keep on bouncing in. Um, in um, place a whole bunch of times over and over and over again, to kind of help. Um, uh, you, you know, it just helps you. I don't know what's the word. Commit to to a certain tone and then keep on moving forward from there. So now with this, uh, like I said before, it's a lot of just processing over and over again on itself. Um, find some more bad frequencies, chop those out, compress it, distort it, and repeat. So the EQ, I don't know if I want to actually EQ something in this one. I didn't like that sound. Got off a tiny bit of the highs, and now let's compress this mother. I think something like this sounds pretty good. Um, I'm listening in. I'm listening in on my headphones rather than out of my monitors right now, just because uh, so I can do this uh, recording stuff. Uh, but I think this sounds pretty decent. Um, there's a little chirp that I'm not a big fan of, and I'm gonna EQ it after this uh, compressor though. Yeah, right there. Uh, if you don't know, like, um, like really, like what I'm, like what I'm doing when I'm boo boo boosting, searching, and then kind of killing it. Uh, it's um, uh, it's a method called uh, search and uh, search and uh, destroy, where basically you boost. Typically, you want a tighter frequency band. Find what sounds like crap, app, and then cut that out. And I usually like like um, cutting with a uh, with a bit of width to my uh, to my um, my um, my um, cuts, just because uh, I think it sounds much more natural than some like super tight cut. But but uh, yeah, um, that's pretty much how I like to make my uh, my own um, kick drums. Uh, what I would do at the very end is throw some fades on. Done, and then you're pretty much good to go. If you wanted to, you could also uh, layer here some sort of top thing over the like like over the top of it. Like uh, you could make um, a little hi hat style type of sound with some uh, noise and a filter. So like you, you could layer something like that over the top of it. And 
And then when you're doing this, it's a really good idea to kind of bust them together. Maybe throw on, like I said before, uh, that awesome RE, uh, the one knob. Uh, let's see, and you bust output. Let's throw that on there and see how this sounds. Once again, keep low. And there's some little frequency that I'm not a fan of in here. Yeah, so like, so like, yeah, uh, with this you can kind of layer them. Them uh, actually, I do more layering when I um, if I was going to do a um, like a a uh, snare drum because those I for those I do like four or five layers to get all the parts to it, uh, which I will do one of those later on. Um, but anyways, now we got to record this actual bus. So set the uh, record source source on bus two, create a new track, and change it to stereo and we're going to choose bus 2 as our as our input for it. Check out the level that's uh, coming in. That works for me. If you want to, you can shift this around a little bit. Kind of like that how it's hitting just before. We are clipping just a little bit though. Let's bring that down. There we go. And now we'll record. Perfect. We can mute these, do some uh, slicing down of the sample. Normalize it. And there you go. Oh, I'm actually pretty happy with this one. I'm going to end up probably keeping this one once I hear it uh, in my uh, in my um, in my um, big monitors but uh, yeah that's how I like to make uh, my own my own personal bass drums uh, if you have any questions comments concerns or anything like that uh, drop a comment or shoot me a message otherwise I will catch you guys next time